Welcome to today's class. Uh, today we are going to see how the full group of Riemannian isometries of the upper half plane decomposes as a semi-direct product uh, of the group of those Riemannian isometries that are actually Mobius transformations with the group uh, with two elements. Mm -hmm. uh, that is, we are going to decompose the, the full group of isometries as a semi-direct product of the group of Mobius transformations that take U bijectively to itself, i.e. PSL2R, with the group 1 minus 1. Um, most of the class I'm going to uh, speak about uh, uh, semi-direct products uh, abstractly for, for, for in general for arbitrary groups and uh, only in the end we're going to uh, come back and, uh, and see how uh, uh, the decomposition for the group of isometries uh, works. Um, so let me uh, start with some considerations about uh, semi-direct products. Let us start with an easy lemma from abstract algebra. So suppose uh, we have a group uh, and two subgroups one of which we know to be normal in G. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the lemma, what the lemma says is that uh, two statements are equivalent, namely that uh, the function from the Cartesian product to G that simply uh, multiplies together uh, any pair of elements of K and H, multiplies them inside G, is bijective. Uh, with a certain uh, so, sort of a set theoretical condition, if you will, mm -hmm. um, so that so that uh, uh, you, you see this 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 equivalent uh, statements. Why what they somehow characterize is when it happens that uh, under these assumptions, uh, G is generated as a group by the union of uh, K and H. Uh -huh. uh, but also in such a way that every element of G can be uniquely written uh, as, a, as a single product of something in K and something in H. Right? So, uh, so that one can entirely describe G in terms of uh, the, two, the two subgroups. Um, kind of similar, this is this somehow like similarly, similar to when um, one decomposes a vector space uh, as a direct sum of two vector subspaces, right? So that uh, um, one can reduce uh, the study of the big vector space to the study of, uh, of the smaller vector, sp vector subspaces. Um, I leave this as an exercise. Uh -huh. So this is, this is, a, this is a quite, quite easy, quite standard exercise. Um, Okay, and then what happens if, 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 if I am in the situation of this lemma, mm -hmm. namely if I'm given a group, two subgroups, one of which is normal, uh -huh. and uh, if, 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 it, if, it, if this happens, if, any, if these two equivalent conditions hold, um, so that, so that this, this multiplication function is uh, bijective, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, well, then, then let's see how, how, uh, how the, the whole multiplication of G in G can be described. Uh -huh. So, uh, namely, uh, because one holds, because we are assuming that one holds, uh, every element of G can be uniquely written as a product KH. Mm -hmm. So, whenever we have two such products and we multiply them and we ask how, how is how does one write the product, the, this multiplication, in the same form of something in H times something in G? Um, well, I mean, uh, there is something, there is, there is kind of the standard trick, right? Um, recalling that K is, we are assuming that K is normal in G, um, because you see, we want, we want to kind of to split, right? To have only things from K in, on the left and only things from H on the right. Mm -hmm. And somehow here 
the problem is these two. Uh -huh. And so we recall that conjugation allows us to, to move things to the right, paying the price of conjugation. Right? Uh, OK, so we pay it, and we move h1 to the right, h1 to the right, paying the price of conjugation, which is not such a, you know, it, it's not so bad, because k is uh, normal in g. So this is the expression of, of this product uh, in that form, in the form, kind of in the, in the normal form um, provided by, uh, by this condition. Um, OK, so this means, so slightly more abstractly, this means that if we, if we consider the group homomorphism from H to the group automorphisms of K given by uh, conjugation by elements of H, uh -huh. uh, that is, each H goes to the automorphism of K given by multi um, conjugating by H, by, by this H, uh, which, which is an automorphism of K because K is normal in G. Um, OK, if we consider that, you know, if we think of conjugation uh, as, as a, this slightly, in, in this slightly more uh, abstract way, we see that uh, if we define a new product in the, in the Cartesian product of K and H, this way, uh, this way uh, resembling, resembling this expression, right? Um, in, indeed, this would become this. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, uh, under this new operation, uh, it turns out then that M uh, is actually uh, an isomorphism. Uh -huh. So not only a bijective function, but an isomorphism. Mm -hmm. in, in particular, we see that, that, uh, that somehow uh, we, we, we do not consider k times h with the usual direct product um, group operation, but with a sort of twisted one, right? So that um, in order to really describe g as a, g as a, as a group in terms of, of k times h, right? uh, uh, or in terms of k and h, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, so when we when we think of uh, of this k times h in this uh, with this new operation in the slightly uh, more abstract way, we notice that that uh, that this can be defined defined even even if my uh, group homomorphism from h to out k does not come from a, a from a from a conjugation, right? So does, does not come from a uh, from an a priori, an a priori a given relation between H and K as subgroups of the same group, right? So so this allows me for a, for a, an abstraction or a, or, a, or, a, or going a little bit more general mm -hmm. uh, to do the following. Now I'm going to I'm not going to I'm going to drop G. That is somehow. I'm going to drop any uh, a priori uh, relation between, or, or assume the relation between K and H, and I'm, I'm only going to assume that they are groups, mm -hmm. and that I am given a group homomorphism from H to out K, mm -hmm. uh, which if you think about it, what this means is that, that uh, what I'm given is an action of H on K, by automorphisms of K, right? So H acts on K, but not only as a set, but, but actually by automorphisms of K, right? Each element of H acts as an automorphism of the group K. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my previous considerations here uh, suggest that I should be able to define a new binary operation under which uh, this, the Cartesian product should be a group, right? So I define it. I define it as, a, as, as a, by the same rule I wrote here. It's, 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 it is really the same rule um, because here I, what I said is that it, this makes sense even even if H and K are, don't, don't don't have a, any relation in a, in an a priori given group G. 
Okay, so I defined that binary operation. It is well defined, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, so in other words, kind of the, the difference between this operation and the usual direct product operation in this Cartesian product is that, that uh, I don't multiply K1 to K with K2 directly, but rather I multiply K1 with the result of acting with H1 in K2. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, uh, in order from this to pass to the right, it pays the price of acting on K2. Okay, uh, now the exercise uh, for you is to show that uh, this, gives, uh, this gives the Cartesian product uh, a group, a structure, the structure of a group. Mm -hmm. um, and this group is going to be called the semi-direct product of H with K. Uh, by me, by means of 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 this of this action by automorphisms. Mm -hmm. So so notice that that so there is some some lack of symmetry here, and, and, and I mean in the in the in the construction of, of the semi-direct product because it really it really is given by but it's defined uh, starting with an action of one on the other by automorphisms, right? So uh, so the notation should somehow reflect that that lack of symmetry. So this is the notation, or if you would like to write H on the left, then I would write um, something like this, right? Or maybe that maybe oops, sorry, something like this H, um, this and phi, a K, and maybe the K even on here, right? Anyway, um, okay. And now some another exercise. Uh huh. Uh, we, that tells me that that uh, um, actually uh, the the canon, kind of the canonical inclusions. Of course, K has a canonical inclusion in the in the Cartesian product, right? Which is every element goes to K times to K comma uh, the identity, and every element here goes to A to to to, to the identity uh, times uh, com comma H. Mm -hmm. That these are group homomorphisms, uh -huh. so that somehow. Even though, even though the, the the actual binary operation is not the same as the as the direct product operation because of this part, uh -huh, at least kind of uh, on the factors it does behave nicely without the need of, the, of any twists. That somehow uh, the exercise uh -huh, um, on on each on each copy, right, on each embedded copy of of K and H. Um, and so, so, so what we are going to do is, is uh, to identify K with its with its image and H with its image. Uh -huh. This is this is uh, uh, something very common, com so, so it's commonly done. Um, okay. And the first thing is uh, to see whether 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 in this way one has a group that has K and H as, as a subgroups and K. As normal subgroup, uh -huh, as as it was in this less abstract situation, mm -hmm. uh, and it is indeed the case, right? So so that H and K are subgroups, are natural subgroups of of, of the semi-direct product. Is this exercise, uh -huh. and now let's prove that K, or rather the copy the copy of K sitting here, is a normal subgroup. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so we have to conjugate inside this group, right? So uh, we need uh, to know how to compute inverses explicitly, okay? But you see, given an element, uh -huh, um, the inverse, the inverse, well, I mean, how, how, how do you compute it? It, it? Here, here, I already wrote the final answer, right? But how do you compute it? Well, you, you, you look at this formula and then you see, okay, uh, uh, the, second, the second entry of the inverse must be must be just the inverse, the inverse of this y, so that has no problem. But for the other one, for the other one, what I want is that you know, after I do x comma y times whatever I want, right? So let's say a comma b, that this well on the second on the second entry I already know that b has to be y inverse. Mm -hmm. But on the on the first one I know that that it, this this is going to be uh, x times phi y, sorry, phi y of a, right? Um, 
and then I know I want you know I want that so I somehow want I want this to be uh, the, the 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 identity of K right I mean the, the the neutral element so so I want somehow that phi cancels with something so phi inverse and then after the phi cancels the x cancels right so I just write this right because then this phi is going to cancel with this phi, and then the x inverse is going to cancel with this x. Uh -huh. So this is how one uh, one comes up with uh, uh, with, with this solution for finding the, the inverse. Uh -huh. And now let's conjugate with k. Mm -hmm. uh, that is with the k seen seen in, uh, inside mm -hmm. the the, the semi-direct product. All right. So when we do this, well, here this one. Uh, well, first, this is substituted here, and second, uh, second, it, it, it's x times phi y of k, right? Comma this times this, okay? Comma y, uh -huh. and then this is times this 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 uh, this pair, mm -hmm. but times that pair, uh, what I have is uh, now I now I have to write uh, phi y of this guy. Right, so phi y of that guy, the phi cancels and it's just x inverse, uh -huh. and then y times y prime, y, y inverse. Uh -huh. So it's the identity. Uh -huh. So this is the result, which in particular you see has a, has a, a, um, a the the the, neutr the 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 neutral element of h in the second entry. So this one is really in the in the copy of k sitting in. Um, in the semi-direct product, right? So uh, indeed, indeed, that copy of k sitting in the semi-direct product is normal, right? And then identifying that copy with k, well, what I say is that k is normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in particular, notice in particular from this from this formula. In particular, if you take x to be the neutral at k, the neutral element at k, uh, we see this one, right? So so that if you conjugate by an element of h, mm -hmm, uh, or by an element of the copy of h inside the semi-direct product, I actually obtain. Well, I just apply this, right? So it's just uh, phi, phi k. So if you will, if you will here, I would have to write comma uh, one h. Mm -hmm. um, but my point, my point is that then, uh, kind of my. Uh, my old phi, my old function phi, my original function phi, tells me precisely, what it tells me is precisely how conjugation by any element here works on k. That's what it tells me. Right? Conjugation, conjugation in, the, in the a posteriori defined the group uh, semi-direct product. Right? So, so in other words, uh, I started with my function phi. I started with my function phi. I defined a new group, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and somehow uh, I recover my original phi as kind of the uh, via conjugation. And somehow it turns out that a posteriori, the 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 the, the original phi uh, somehow dictates me how conjugation by elements of H, so of, of, of the group that is entirely disjoint from K, works. Mm -hmm. uh, conjugation in K, right? Um, okay. Um, all right. Um, so somehow, I mean, this is this is important for kind of for the practice, right? So when 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 you want to see in practice that a group is semi-direct product or not. Uh, then, then you want to see, um, then somehow, somehow you want to see this fee. Then that fee should should be should be precisely how conjugation is is given. So the the correspondence rule of conjugation. Okay, now, um, um, this theorem, this theorem, gives me a sufficient criterion to to recognize a uh, semi-direct product in short exact sequences mm -hmm. so if it so happens that a, that a short exact sequence splits on the right uh -huh, 
so that there exists a group homomorphism from C to B with the property that this composition is the identity of C if the short exact sequence splits on the right then then I can deduce that B is the semi-direct product of the extremes under some action of the right-hand side group on the left-hand side group by automorphisms uh -huh. um, and that and actually the, the original um, the original uh, 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 short exact sequence is essentially the short exact sequence the canonical short exact sequence associated to a semi-direct product um, so okay so this this theorem tells me if if i'm given a short exact sequence tells me a sufficient criterion to recognize the middle term as a, as a, as a, um, as a semi-direct product of the extremes okay so let's uh, let's see how the proof goes uh, so given s so given this one somehow s what is what it is giving me since since, since this composition is the identity s has to be injective and so S somehow what tell what it is giving me is a copy of C as a subgroup of B. That's that's somehow what is uh, giving me. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking in that way, I, I have here the copy of C sitting as a subgroup of B, mm -hmm. and and uh, and somehow what I would like is that. Uh, uh, this helps this helps me to this helps me to act on a right and somehow the action of this group on a should be because of this observation should should be given in terms of conjugation of conjugation of elements of a by elements of this image so so I defined you see so I let C, C cap, uh, um, 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 small c, uh, I send it to the automorphism given by, okay, I want the automorphism to be given by conjuga conjugation on A by elements of SC, but in order to be able to do that, what I need is I need to consider the copy of A sitting in B, right? So I consider the copy of A sitting in B, and then I act by conjugation by the copy of C sitting in B via S, uh-huh. Okay, but then I really want to land in A. Okay, so I just take F inverse, right? F inverse is really defined only in the image of F. Right? Um, but this, this I know, I mean, this I know that is in the image of, a, of F simply because the image of F is normal in B. Um, or if you will, if you kind of, if you are still skeptical, then just uh, take, take, take such an element and apply G to it. Right? When you apply G, it's quite easy to see that that it goes to the to the neutral element of C, and so 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 this one is in the kernel of G, so in the image of F because of exactness. Okay. Anyway, uh, so you see the final the final formula may look a bit strange, but the point is the point is. Uh, uh, um, it's the natural thing to do, right? One. And one is just careful to perform the operation where it makes sense. But other than that, one precisely kind of one pursues this. Okay, so I mean, one 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 deduces that this has to be things have to be defined this way um, because because of, because of this observation. Okay, so of course, um, of course, I'm I'm. Uh, 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 it's an easy exercise to, to show that for each C, this phi of C uh, is an automorphism of A, and that phi is a group homomorphism from, from C to out C. This I, this I, uh, I leave you as an exercise. Uh -huh. And now, 
once we have this right so that so that we we have our candidate um, uh, semi direct product uh, now we want this function you know? this, so because we already have this group now that function how what should that function be i mean if b if, if this b if this if there's really going to be an isomorphism uh -huh, so somehow somehow i want every element of b to be a product of what of well of an element in the image of a with an element in the image of s right which is how a and b sit inside b mm -hmm. okay so that's what i do so because i, re I recall that the elements here, I mean, this as a set is the is is the is a Cartesian product. So the elements here I, are ordered pairs, a comma c. Okay, but given any such pair, then I know what I want I what I want h of of that pair to be. Um, okay. Um, now uh, I leave you as an exercise to see that this is a group homomorphism. Uh, that's that's not hard uh -huh. and uh, let's uh, 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 after having this exercise as a, as a fact um, let us check that uh, h is uh, bijective uh -huh. so we start with the uh, surjectivity uh -huh. um, and well I mean here you can see here here you already you can see already a, a, a pair of elements uh, that can easily be seen to, to, to land in B under H. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, I, won't, I won't say more about this. I mean, it is possible to cook up these elements. Um, somehow this one, this one, it has to be, right? So this, this element has to, it has to be that one. And then how does, how one comes up with the with this one, well, you you know that you want this element to be in the kernel of G, right? Uh, and then once you know that, then then you see okay, so so you want this part because G preceded by S is the identity of C. Somehow you want you 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 cop this 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 uh, this part of this product uh, so that so that it 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 uh, it, uh, it it's annihilated with this GB, right? That it cancels with that GB. So, so you you know you have to write B here, right? and then you pull you pull that back to A, right? So that's why F inverse. Um, okay. Um, so it's surjective, uh -huh. and for the injectivity, that's also easy. So take an element, uh, uh, take an element of the semi-direct product that lands at the, ne at, at the at the neutral element in B. Mm -hmm. uh, then, well, then, then the neutral element of C is G of this of this neutral element, which is by which is because of how H is given, is uh, this element. Uh -huh. But G preceded by F is the identity of C. I mean, G, sorry, G preceded by F in A is the identity is the uh, the neutral element of C. And G preceded by S is the identity function of C. So we are done because then this tells me that C is the identity of C, this, this, this small C. But then, but then F of A has to be the identity of B. Um, but F is injective, so A is the identity of A of capital A. Okay, so it's bijective. Uh -huh. And finally, I mean, the commutativity of this diagram, I would say, is just obvious. Um, okay, uh, so we have our criterion. So, so, so let's see. Example, uh -huh. example. So recall that S star L two R was defined to be the set of all two by two real matrices with determinant one or minus one. And what I say, what I, what this theorem says is that it can be decomposed as a semi-direct product of SL2R by the group with two elements under certain action of the group with two elements here, uh, certain action phi by automorphisms that end up corresponding to uh, conjugation of matrices. 
uh, that's this observation. Um, okay, so let's see. Well, of course, I have this short exact sequence, right? Which I construct by, by uh, you know, from uh, um, from S L from S star L to R to one minus one. I have the surjective group homomorphism given by the, by taking the determinant. Right? I mean, by definition, is uh, surjective. Uh -huh. And then when I take its kernel, it's precisely those that have determinant one. Okay, so so I have a, a um, short exact sequence, uh -huh. and all I need, all I need at this point is because because of the of the of the previous theorem, is a functions, a, a, a group homomorphism, such that this is the identity of the group with two elements. Uh -huh. So this is, has two elements, and I know that one has to go to one under under this uh, pink homomorphism I'm looking for. So I only need to, to, to take, uh, to determine uh, um, an order two matrix mm -hmm. in, 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 uh, of determinant minus one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, you can see, take this one or take, um, right? Whichever you want, I mean, it, it would give you two different functions here, right? But, but in the end, the, 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 the automorphism which would be conjugation, conjugation uh, would be the same in any case. Uh, so, so you see this phi, the, the, the corresponding, the corresponding phi from from C to A would be given by uh, phi of the non-identity element here of minus one acting on a matrix. Uh, well, I know it has to be conjugation. By uh, by this element inside this group, mm -hmm. it has to be that, and I just compute. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, I in other words, I could have given you this directly, uh -huh, but somehow I think sometimes it's simpler to just give uh, this group homomorphism. Okay, and then that's it. Right, that's it. That's all I needed. That's all I needed. That uh, that the short exact sequence split on the right. Um, okay, by the way, uh, notice that the isometry of the upper half plane associated with this, with this matrix is precisely the one we encountered before. It's precisely this one, right? So, so somehow here I'm really kind of indicating, if I pass to the level of Mobius transformations, I'm indicating how conjugating by by that particular um, isometry looks like. Uh -huh. um, okay. Uh, now let's let's push this theorem to uh, to the isometry group of uh, the upper half plane because uh, somehow, for instance, this. I mean, this is not really the isometry group, right? Because um, if two matrices here differ, differ by a multiplication by a non-zero scalar, in this case, one or minus one, uh, they give me the same uh, isometry, actually. Uh -huh. um, for instance, this matrix and this matrix, they really give me the same isometry uh, of the upper half plane, right? This one somehow it would look like W goes to W plus W conjugate plus zero, uh, zero W conjugate minus one, right? Which in the end is, is just the same as minus W conjugate. Okay, um, so let's push to the to to the level of isometries. Uh -huh. uh, how do we push? Well, we already know at least how to push. Um, SL two R, right? So, so taking, taking, uh, modding out by, uh, by the, by multiply by, modding, modding out, you know, identifying two matrices whenever they, they differ by a multiplication by a non-zero scalar. Right? Okay, so, so I define this P S P S star L two R as S star L two R divided by uh, all the diagonal matrices belonging to it. Which are just one minus one, one identity minus the identity. 
Okay, now recall from the previous class that I have the group homomorphism that to each matrix associates the corresponding isometry, right? That if the if the matrix has a terminant one, it, it associates the just the, the, the Mobius transformation of the matrix. And if it has the terminant minus one, then it, it, it associ associates this other uh, funny Mobius-like transformation, right? Where one has, uh, it, it, for, for a matrix alpha, beta, gamma, delta of the terminant minus one, one considers the expression alpha W conjugate plus beta divided by uh, gamma W conjugate plus delta. Um, okay, so that, that, that group homomorphism that I call mu tilde. Uh -huh. And well, it is, it is a, an easy exercise to show that, that the kernel is just one minus one. Um, I leave it as an exercise. Uh -huh. uh, okay. So, so this, this since, since, since we, we know that this group that this homomorphism uh, is surjective. This was uh, the theorem from, from last class. Uh, we, we deduce, just, just using the, 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 the isomorphism theorem uh, from basic group theory, we know that this must be the case, right? So that this group is isomorphic to this one modulo the kernel of mu tilde, which is uh, this one. So. Okay, so so we know that this 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 at least tells me you know okay so you you can this is almost a, a, a group of matrices and you know it's almost that group of matrices and you know exactly when you have when when two matrices give you the same isometry that that's what this isomorphism tells me mm -hmm. so in other words this isomorphism it already gives me a very concrete realization of this one okay. Um, now, uh, now let's decompose. Let's further decompose this one, right? Because uh, here I already have a decomposition of S star L two R. So before projectivizing, uh -huh. and somehow, if you will, you know, like if you projectivize this, then you have to projectivize this. But then you okay, you projectivize this. But when you projectivize this, you see um, somehow it's you have to projectivize this one, which, you know, it just remains the same. Right? I mean, it's in the same group. Anyway, uh, I mean, somehow, somehow you see that somehow this one, this plus minus one from here has to survive after projectivizing. Okay, so the theorem should be this one. Um, okay, uh, and for that, I only need uh, because of the previous theorem, well, I mean, not this theorem, but, but this other theorem, this uh, 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 sufficient criterion for a group to be a, uh, uh, a semi-direct product of, of, of other groups arising from a short exact sequence, all I need is that a short, certain short exact sequence splits. Okay, which is my short exact sequence? Well, you can, you can already guess that this is my short exact sequence. Um, from how do I pass, right? I mean, this one, this one, this one kind of, there's a canonical injective group homomorphism to this one, that is clear, right? Um, but then from this one, how do I pass to this one? Well, you're just using the determinant, right? Because the determinant doesn't change if you multiply with minus one. Uh, okay, so this is kind of, this is induced by the determinant. So it's some sort of determinant bar, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, and so I have my short exact sequence. I would have to check that it's 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 really it's, that it is exact, right? But this, this this is easy, and I leave it as an exercise. And now I only need to split this one. For that, I I I, I look at a bigger picture, right? I, I notice that that um that so, that I have a commutative diagram with exact rows now, right? with this exact row and this exact row. Um, and that in this previous one, that's precisely the one that I split here in my previous theorem. Mm -hmm. So I know that this one is the identity. And now I, I want this one, uh, one, I want a morphism here. 
such that this is the identity. Okay, but how about this? Notice, if I do this, this, and this, when I compose with this, it just gives me the identity. So, so somehow, so this splitting induces a, a splitting here, a splitting here. So I'm done. I'm done. And somehow this function, the function that I obtain here, which would be some some sort of s tilde or something, sorry, s, s, s bar or something like that. What it really does, you see, I mean, concretely, uh, it, 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 it sends minus one, sends minus one to the isometry, to kind of to our favorite isometry, uh, to our favorite isometry that to each w in u uh, sends it to minus w conjugate. Um, somehow, somehow that that would be the, the um, that would be the interpretation on their you you know using this isomorphism as identification. Um, okay, so so in other words, the the the, the semi-direct product decomposition of this guy, or if you will, of this guy, of this guy, of the full isometric group, as a uh, as a um, semi-direct product of the group of orientation preserving isometries with a two, the, with a two element group. What it does is my, uh, somehow my, uh, uh, this phi, this phi uh, sends minus one to conjugation of Mobius transformations by this function, by this reflection. So it, it, it can actually be written in very, very concrete, very specific terms. Um, okay, and so I have, I have this corollary, right? So, so which I would say is very interesting. Uh, so, so, so this isometric group is almost a group of matrices. You know exactly when two matrices give you the same isometry. Uh -huh. uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's also can be can be can be completely described also in terms of the group of preserving orientation and a single distinguished isometry not preserving the orientation. Um, okay, and so uh, so we are done um, with the isometric group of uh, of the upper half plane. Um, our, the next thing I'm going to do is to study a little bit the geometry of of the different types of uh, orientation preserving isometries. Right. So now take an orientation preserving isometry of U. That orientation preserving isometry is a Mobius transformation. As such, it's either parabolic or elliptic or uh, hyperbolic. Or the identity, um, and, uh, and and as such, it has fixed points, and and one can visualize the, the geometric behavior as a certain kind of as as a, as a certain flow as uh, one iterates the, is, the the isometry. So, uh, how does it? How does these iterations or this fixed point look like in the in this in the in the Specific situation where 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 we are where, where we also know that the Mobius transformation sends U to itself. Um, that's the next thing. Afterwards, we have to move on to the disk to pull all this information to the disk, right? So all these theorems to the disk, and also to to pull back the the this I saw this now this. Um, uh, isomorphisms to the to the hyperboloid where we had a, a, some uh, a, a, some containments that we we didn't prove were equalities remember okay so that's it for today <laughs>